So I have had three weeks early access thanks to THQ Nordic and Experiment 101 and today I bring you guys things I wished I knew before playing, basically tips and tricks to help new players to this game. How's it going people my name is DPJ and if you enjoyed the video leaving a like really helps out and if you like what you see and want to see more Bio Mutant be sure to subscribe. So Biomutant is an open world game full of many different individual systems, there's plenty of aspects to this game to learn and loads of things for you to do. Today I bring you some tips I have learned which will no doubt help you out with your time here while playing, especially within the early stages. Ok so when it comes to starting the game and picking what breed and class you think might be best to play with, I will say. After playing early for 3 weeks and using every class quite a bit, I will state this isn't something I would worry about too much, as when it comes to what the actual best class is, I don't think there is one. And after a couple of hours playtime and a couple of upgrades, all are equally as powerful in terms of their own right. And if I'm honest, they ain't all that different, yes each certain class offers different benefits, but within that true end game, it's more about how you build your character over how your character starts out and the way in which these characters can be built up. Your starting points don't really affect much and I believe the fact of Experiment 101 knew this and made starter classes not too far different due to when it comes to unlocking things further on into the game, players may want to spin the other way. So yes, if I knew this when I first started I wouldn't have picked the Psy Freak as my saboteur right now after learning about this game's level of system is somewhat equally as powerful or not far behind when it comes to Psy powers and abilities. So yes, although individual classes do offer slight benefits, it isn't that different so I wouldn't worry about it. Another thing I know people will want to do is have their character look in a certain way. Now you may know you can mutate your character when you create them to fit a certain shape or size, adjusting the base attributes. Some people may want to go full strength, but don't want their character looking like a chicken breast. Well little did I know that you can actually have your base stats put into one place and not worry about your character's shape, as once you are into the game, you can actually change the way in which your character looks without affecting those attributes. This is done not long into the game here, obviously because it's early access I can't show you that right now. But yes guys, like I said, I wouldn't worry about your character's mutation in terms of the way it looks and its shape because this can be adjusted later on. So this game has a pretty depthy crafting system to it, from weapons to armour, and everyone knows this. Now my advice to you will be, don't hold back when it comes to crafting and building your character up. I did, as I was hoarding many many materials thinking something important was going to come along that I needed my materials for. This was a big mistake, and if anything guys, it held me back. I should have spent materials earlier, crafted weapons, and just played the game the way it should be played. The thing is, the more you actually play, the more materials you come across anyway. And because each material is maxed out at 99, hoarding them is pointless. So have fun, craft away, and make the game a little easier on yourself. Stop hoarding. So early on, you come across an item which is basically a campaign item, used for going forward, progressing. The item is called the Old World Clunk Fist. Now I thought this was an item needed to break down walls to help you progress. And although that's exactly what this is, I didn't expect nor did I think it would be an incredible early game weapon too, which it is. I carried on using my standard weapons on my saboteur and only really used this when I needed to smash through walls. That was until my third or fourth short playthrough where I decided to just see what this was like within the battle and it surprised me, it is incredibly powerful. It has amazing area of effect attacks and also a few ranged attacks too. It honestly made the game when playing much much easier for me. This thing can also be upgraded and made even better and if that interests you, I have a full guide on my channel so do check this out. But yes, the old world clunk fist you come across relatively early within the game, you can't avoid it, but when you do get this thing, make sure you use it. Ok so moving on, and one of the many forms of levelling your character up is earning bio points and buying and equipping abilities. Bio points come from bio creeps found near contaminated areas and also down in those sewer systems and also bio containers. Now these for me are probably the rarest in terms of early gameplay but you do start to pick up a decent amount further on in. 
Now, biopoints do you unlock great biogenetics, aka abilities, which you combine to your four main controller buttons and use them in the here battle. And it's something I did early on with the points I had. But guys, what I would suggest when thinking about upgrading your class is about the resistance here. As these are super important as they allow you to explore more areas of the map. Now I ain't saying don't buy yourself abilities, it's just with the more PSI points you will earn early on, you can have abilities anyway here so you wouldn't be missing out much in terms of having your character be as effective as possible. But the resistance is something to think about as like I said it means you can explore more of the map earlier on go into areas you will find and survive longer within said areas. So yes, when it comes to those bio points, do think about your resistances. Another thing I will add as we are talking about resistance, when you go into certain contaminated areas, heat, radiation, biohazard, if you have no resistance to these, you will die pretty quickly. But a tip, if you find yourself a pool of water and stand in it, your resistance bar will drop back down to zero. And this is very useful if you don't have points to buy into resistances but need to travel through or into a certain area and you don't want to die. So yes guys, if you find a pool, run to it, stand in it and you'll notice your bar drop. Now I did test this out within the cold area but under my testing it didn't seem to work. Maybe because that water is indeed still cold. Another thing I didn't pick up on straight away, which helps a ton and saves a lot of time, and it's something fun to work towards, and that is within your inventory menu you have a tab called Outfits. Here there are 5 presets, presets which you can set yourself for different instances you will come across while playing. What I am doing here to save myself a ton of time is setting each preset for a different resistance that you will need. Now like I said, Armour does offer resistances too, and setting up presets for this means that when you get into an area you need to explore or travel through, you can quickly change your preset and you're good to go off the bat. And also these presets can be used for many other things too, so keep them in mind. Now something else I found extremely helpful, and I don't know if this should be a part of the game, if you are in the middle of a river, deep water and you cannot get out of it and you know you're going to die, if you quickly jump then press start, you can actually fast travel to any point you've previously interacted with, therefore saving your own life. Now unless you jump you can't fast travel so you must first jump, then quickly press pause, go to the map and select any previous point you've interacted with, because if you die you will lose progress and restart from your last checkpoint. So just keep that in mind as it really helps out. And lastly guys, sell and scrap stuff you ain't using early on. This is another thing I didn't do, I was just hoarding everything when in reality I was never going to use any of it because it was either a lower level than what I needed, it was poor or non rare quality, so it's basically just junk. This you can sell or scrap, earning green and very important materials. Green is used to obviously purchase items and consumables which will be very helpful to you and materials will indeed help you with crafting so yeah guys don't be a noob like me and hoard everything, sell stuff you don't need which will assist you further. And there we have it guys, things you need to know before you playing which I hope helps you out. And on that note, the end of the video has arrived. If you enjoyed it, leaving a like really helps me out. If you're new around here and want to see more, by all means, be sure to subscribe. And if you never want to miss a video I upload, you can turn notifications on by hitting that bell button. But guys, thanks as always for stopping by, and hopefully I will see you on that next one.